I'm Andrew Harris with the BC Lions. You're watching CTV with Hudson Mack. CTV News at 5 with Hudson Mack. Uh, well, by this time tomorrow night, the lights will be on twinkling in Centennial Square and the crews, as Joe showed us today, were uh, putting on the final touches. City crews busy this afternoon stringing the last of the Christmas lights and putting up the final decorations, getting ready for tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow night. As Joe told us, the kickoff is at 4. There'll be food and drinks along with entertainment. The Downtown Victoria Business Association invites everybody to come down and get into the spirit of the season. The light up will be taking place at 5 o'clock. We'll provide some additional entertainment right through until 5.30. And then the Santa Claus parade will be beginning at uh, 5.45. It'll be starting at the legislature and coming right up Government Street here to end north at Capitol Iron. So there's lots of things for people to be doing tomorrow, not only shopping, but really enjoying this remarkable event. This is the fourth annual Christmas tree light up in Centennial Square, and estimators, uh, organizers estimate rather more than a thousand people will attend the light up of the tree in the square, and many more than that will line Government Street for the Santa Claus parade. Another cold night left icy roads for drivers when they woke up this morning, and many motorists, when they hit the road, simply weren't ready. You can see how slippery it is in Machosan near Happy Valley this morning. It caused a driver to lose control and slide into a power pole. That sheared off the pole, brought the lines down across the road, and knocked out hydro to more than 1,300 customers. The driver of the vehicle was taken to the hospital with undetermined injuries. We're just hoping that the public can understand that this time of year, uh, with the weather that we're having, that we want to make sure everyone's paying attention to their speed, their distance that they have between the other vehicles, and of course to uh, prepare by having appropriate tires on their vehicles so that we don't have these kind of things happening morning after morning during this season. It was a mess on the West Shore this morning. Monty's responded to five collisions and icy roads and the way the drivers drove on them were factors in every crash. And slippery roads were to blame for a couple of vehicles going into the ditch in Sanish this morning. The driver of one car lost control and went off the road just narrowly missing a tree. The driver was taken to the hospital with undetermined injuries. And another car slid on some ice and got caught in a large rut. Our responders had to close a lane of traffic to pull the vehicle out. That caused some major delays. Crews sprayed the road with a de-icing brine, which made things better. But they're encouraging you to slow down and be ready for slippery conditions in the morning. Well, BC Ferries will definitely be busy this weekend as fans make the trek back and forth for Grey Cup Sunday and early next month. That crossing to the mainland is going to cost you more. BC Ferries is doubling its fuel surcharge on December 12th. It says due to the rising cost of marine diesel fuel, the surcharges on the three major routes from the mainland to Vancouver Island will rise from 2.5% to 5%. BC Ferries annual fuel cost was nearly $46 million in 2003. Now, Ferries has reduced its fuel consumption by about 5% since that time, but it says the cost of fuel in the coming year will hit more than $120 million. Well, a vehicle and driver uh, currently on the major routes is uh, $63. Uh, as of December 12th, it'll be $64.55. So it'll be going up uh, by $1.55. But right now we are paying about $1.09 per litre uh, out of vessels that are fueled out of our Tawas and Terminal. Uh, back in the summertime, it was 90 in the 90s uh, cents per litre. So uh, it is rising and unfortunately we have to pass those costs on. The NDP doesn't like it. It says the province should be investing in the ferry system to make sure that rates stay low and that we don't see such hikes around the holidays. At, at this time of the year, I think people feel particularly pinched. They know that their, their utilities are going to cost them more this winter. And now it may mean the difference between people getting back and forth to visit family at Christmas. And any way you look at it, this is a big chunk of coal in the stocking of British Columbians. BC Ferries says the fuel surcharge that is currently in place on the minor routes will stay unchanged. It currently sits at 5%. Victoria Police have now released the jailhouse video which was used in evidence at the trial of a senior Victoria Police officer who was convicted this week of assault. A judge handed down a 12-month suspended sentence to Sergeant George Chong for using excessive force on a prisoner while in cells. And he warned the officer that had he been a member of the public, he would be serving jail time. In the video, Chong is seen putting Frank Blair into a chokehold in an incident in January 2010 until Blair loses consciousness and later hits his head. Officers can then be seen cleaning up what appears to be blood. Blair had been taken to the Vic PD lockup mistakenly in the first place and was being fingerprinted. He was taken to the hospital after being choked. 
Blair is now suing the Victoria Police Department and Sergeant Chong in a civil suit. The conviction in court this week was Chong's second for assault. He is now on vacation leave and is eligible to retire from the department next February. The Office of the Police Complaint Commissioner is now reviewing the incident and Chong may face further reprimand. A 20-year-old man is recovering at home tonight with multiple stab wounds. Knives came out near the Our Place drop-in center in downtown Victoria this afternoon, and police say the attacker is still on the loose. Police tape was rolled out at about 1.30 this afternoon. Officers responded after getting numerous 911 calls, saying that a man had been stabbed several times in an altercation in the shelter. When police showed up, most people dispersed, but officers evacuated the rest of the building, and there was a witness in the courtyard who saw the victim with stab wounds. Um, he was stabbed in the abdomen. Um, I seen a stab mark in the upper chest part, and then I saw a stab wound in the arm. We're trying to piece together exactly what happened. One man uh, in his 20s was taken to hospital, serious condition, um, from what appears to be multiple stab wounds. Um, he remains uncooperative with police, and we do not have a suspect identified at this time. He has since been released. Detectives and forensic investigators were still collecting evidence late this afternoon. Police believe the victim walked into our place with the wounds. Since the incident, the victim has now been released from the hospital. And shortly after that, not far away, right outside our place, a pedestrian was hit by an SUV. A man was crossing the street and was hit. He was rushed by ambulance to the hospital. His injuries uh, do not appear to be life-threatening. Busy afternoon for Vic PD. While they were still dealing with the incident at our place, police were called to rush to Esquimalt after getting calls of a pepper spray attack, a random attack that happened in the 700 block of Lampson, where a 19 year old allegedly pepper sprayed two teens walking down the street. The suspect ran from police and into bushes near Lions Little League Park, then apparently threatened another group of teens. Seven units were called in and a canine unit. As a result of quite a few units attending here, we were able to contain the area. One of the traffic units that came over was able to see the mail running across a field into Lions Park here on Lapson. And as a result, we contained it. Uh, canine was called. Uh, the mail fled out of the bushes and was apprehended uh, not too far away from where we're standing right now. Uh, one male is in custody. Uh, he's looking at charges of assault with a weapon. Uh, looks like two counts, um, as uh, we do have two victims. One victim was rushed to the hospital. The other was treated on the scene by paramedics. Police say the suspect is known to officers. RCMP in the Nanaimo tonight are trying to track down two men who, uh, believe it or not, stole a 14-year-old boy's bike. It happened at the intersection of 107th Street and Highway 19A at about 5.30 in the evening. It happened Monday the 14th. The boy was with his 16-year-old brother when two men in a truck pulled over and then accused the boys of throwing a rock at them. The men then grabbed the younger boy's bike, put it in the back of the truck, and took off with it. We don't know whether the kids threw the rock at the truck or not, but the bottom line is the adults had no right to take their bike. So we're hoping they'll do the right thing, they'll hear this, and they'll turn the bike over so we can get it back to the kids. The bike is a specialized brand. It has black handlebars and skulls on the bars. The truck was a dark blue Dodge 2500. Anyone who has information about where the bike is or who these two men are is asked to contact the Nanaimo RCMP.